So at basically the blink of an eye, Jujutsu Kaisen's latest arcade and inventory or Gojo's flashback arc as some might call it, just finished with this latest episode. And I can't be the only one who thinks this arc went by super quick. It feels like just last week the new season dropped and now we are moving on towards an entirely different segment in the story. It may have only been about 5 episodes, but the amount of material that was packed in, especially throughout that latter half when Toji pulled off on Gojo, was just insane. This arc was a roller coaster to say the least, with so many things I could pinpoint and talk about. It had pretty much everything from representing the core themes of the story to the crazy hype and action that Jujutsu Kaisen is known for with fights like Toji vs Gojo and of course a deep dive into three characters that have a ridiculous amount of impact and influence on the story, especially throughout this next arc. This flashback did wonders in pretty much every regard. Jujutsu Kaisen started off as a really promising new shonen and I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed that first season. There was a decent antagonist with Mahito, the story threw some plot twists that you hear and there and scenes like Yuji and Toto double teaming Hanami being beating the life out of him and Gojo doing Gojo things, bullying these cursed spirits was all dope. But it definitely needed more substance to it, just that extra bit of flair. An arc where the story can ascend to that next level and I think it's fair to say that hidden inventory hit all the targets and maybe even overachieved in some aspects. This arc was amazing and although the start of the season was the weakest part, it did a couple cool things that I ended up liking when I went back and rewatched a few scenes. Aside from Gojo teasing Utahime, the story puts a clear focus on Gojo and Gekko's way of thinking at that point. We see that Gojo has issues with protecting the weak and is also just a terrible student in every way shape or form. He's disrespectful to his seniors and comes off as quite rude, but Geto is basically the complete opposite. By of course having the opinion that weak people in society should be protected by the Jujutsu sorcerers and in general he's just a class act and the perfect student. And of course if you made it through to the end of this arc you'd know that Gojo and Geto essentially swap in their ideals and the way that they act, at least for the most part. They both change through the events that happen and Geto comes to the conclusion to eradicate every non-sorcerer and is done protecting the weak. A complete 180 from his past self and in hindsight, Gege did a great job in establishing their characters at the beginning and after looking back, it makes what they evolved into hit deeper and carry more meaning. But aside from this, the start of the arc really only continues to establish what's important for later. Toji of course gets his long awaited introduction and you can tell from frame 1 that he's going to be the big bad villain of the arc. Gojo and Geto both demonstrate that they are the strongest, bodying pretty much everyone that tries to beef with them but then everything starts to change on that one fateful day within the barriers of Jujutsu High, where things in the story really kick off and Toji, the assassin labelled as the sorcerer killer, makes his move. Episode 3 is where we get into the meats of the arc and I'm still trying to wrap my head around what the hell took place. The meticulous planning from Toji to destroy Gojo in such a fashion was genuinely shocking. Gojo, although isn't nearly as strong as his future self that we see in season 1, is still Satoru Gojo, the man who possesses both the six eyes and limitless curse technique, two of the most broken abilities in the entire series got utterly manhandled to the point where he almost bit the dust and died right then and there if it wasn't for the reverse curse technique. Toji went above and beyond and did the impossible by taking Gojo down right there. An invisible man with zero cursed energy who got discarded from his clan managed to take down someone as blessed as Gojo. Straight insanity and just like I said in my other video talking about this episode, it was just as shocking as when I first read this fact. The gruesome defeat of Gojo in itself was crazy but that single action had such a dramatic effect on quite literally the entire world. As this event sparked so many changes to the characters, the Jujutsu world in itself and of course the narrative of the story. It's an event that had an effect that lingered even past this arc and although Toji in general is such a dope character whose fighting style is still one of my favourites out of the entire cast, his likability, at least for me, comes from this very influence he has on the story. All the crazy shit that happens from Gojo's evolution to Geto's downfall all stems from Toji's actions and his most notable one of killing Riko is still something that hits deep to this there. The ending song playing and her finding out she don't gotta go through with the merger only to get shot down and bro walking in talking about okay job's all done now is one of the wildest moments in this arc and a moment that still hasn't left my mind. Told you my guy but that was foul and his battle against Geto was another part that ended up surprising me. The manga had a pretty cool version of this fight but the anime definitely surpassed it for me. Aside from Gojo's blue and hollow purple that we see in the next battle, this fight had the best animation out of all the fight scenes which is crazy to me. It was an extended version and depicted perfectly that Toji is on a whole nother level, bodying all of Geto's abilities from simple domains and massive cursed spirits showing that he was no fluke and a real deal. An important fight as it's the end of Toji's reign and the conclusion to such a dire event for the sorcerers who held such a massive L that day. But then after delivering Riko to the Time Vessel Association, the moment I've been waiting for since god knows when finally took place. 
Gojo's return. It was no surprise that Gojo was coming back. Heck, the man is in the future parts of the story, so the fact of him coming back was happening. But the real question was how? How was Gojo Satoru going to come back after holding such a brutal loss? And when facing a die situation in Jujutsu Kaisen, a character more times than not comes back stronger than ever. And from facing death, Gojo learns yet another busted ability with the reverse curse technique, which turned him from broken to the strongest modern sorcerer at that time. Gojo vs Toji ain't have the most action packed fight scenes in the arc, but it did wonders for both their characters and the dynamic they shared, along with establishing the fact of Gojo being the strongest. The man is free falling through the air with nothing but joy after Riko's death, as he's now at the pinnacle of the Jiu Jitsu world. And that hollow purple he shot at Toji was probably the best thing I've seen from this anime, I'm not gonna lie. I know there's a lot of discourse surrounding this fight, which is to be expected as it's been hyped up for a couple years now, but aside from some interesting angle choices from Mappa, this fight was fire in every other regard. The voice acting in particular was genuinely perfect and I don't see enough people talking about that. The same could be said about the aftermath. Gojo holding Riko's corpse as the Vessel Association is clapping because their mission succeeded is such a dark moment within the arc and Gojo and Ghetto's reaction to this is a clear testament of that. Especially Ghetto's as this is the start of his downfall that I mentioned earlier and the anime symbolises this as the ground is crumbling beneath him and his separation from Gojo, which if I remember correctly was not included in the manga. A lot of people regard this arc as the quote unquote Gojo's arc, which is fair because it's a really important arc for his character, someone we've been with since the damn start of the story, but Gege puts an almost equal amount of focus on Ghetto as well, and this is clear as day after this latest episode. Ghetto's downfall started from the moment in the religious group headquarters and clearly affected him so much that he started to doubt his initial ideology and question whether it was even worth protecting evil people like that. But it wasn't even just that moment, Ghetto's ability in itself is such a torture to him as he has to swallow and consume curses and in the grand scheme of things it's all to protect people like that who create these curses that he has to consume and that realization continued to push him over the edge. But the final nail in the coffin was both his fellow sorcerer Hybera, a completely innocent person dying to a curse and also the two girls who was abused by non sorcerers and taken blame for a curse's actions. This is what tipped him over the edge and caused the big change within his mindset, killing everyone in that village the two girls was in and even his own parents, doubling down on the path he chose. And the way this happens over a year makes it all the more better for his character as this change didn't just spark overnight, but instead took weeks and months of battling with his inner thoughts. Ghetto's downfall was handled just as great as Gojo becoming the strongest and the way these two mirror their past selves is something I didn't notice at first but once I did it only brought my rating for this arc higher. Amazing characterization, dope fights, crazy plot twists, this arc has it all man and it's insane how the next arc will be even better. I really liked this arc when I first read it and seeing it animated with Mappa giving it the role gives me that same feeling I had when I first read it. Honestly, there's not much more I can add. This arc definitely added that substance that Jujutsu Kaisen was lacking in and it will only continue to get better with the next episodes. But that's all from me in this vid. If you enjoyed, of course, leave a like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. And for now, I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.